SO2R operation or single operator true radio uh, HF operation is when you use two radios as a single operator. Generally, it is used in contesting where we want to be operating on one band while maybe hunting and pecking on a different band. Or if we're really going at it, we could actually be doing dueling CQ on each band if you're of that mindset and you really want to challenge. The Flex 6000 series radios can all leverage the SO2R operation beautifully. Uh, and that all comes complete with the radios. So it's just a software configuration. And I'm going to touch on some parts of it when you use N1MM as a logging program. All of this is built in. You don't have to buy anything extra. And as I said earlier, it works beautifully. Now, we have two different types of radios, one with uh, one spectral capture unit and an, another series of radios with two. The difference being, if you have a single spectral capture unit radio, that's the Flex 6300, 6400, and 6500 series, they have one spectral capture unit, and that means you can only use one antenna at any given time. And while it does have two antenna ports on the back of the radio, that is an antenna switch that allows you to switch between antenna 1 or antenna 2. In the Flex 6600 and the 6700, there are two spectral capture units, and that allows you to use two different antennas at the same time. And this is great. Uh, you could be on your tri-bander and an 8040 trap dipole at the same time with both radios. And there are two UHF connectors on the back, uh, and you can use both of them, as again, as I said, at the same time. And this is a significant advantage over any other product available if you wanted to do an SO2R operation where you don't have to go out and buy double of everything. It's already all built in, including bandpass filters. In the 6600, we have bandpass filters with greater than 55 to 60 dB of band isolation. And I'm going to show that isolation near the end of the video and how well it works. And on the 6500 and 6400, we have about 30 to 35 dB of band isolation. Still pretty good numbers. So looking here at my screen, uh, this is a my remote desktop, and I have N1MM set up as an SO2R configuration. I'm not going to go into it in depth, but when you are using it in a contesting role, you have two logbook entry screens. One is here on the top. This one happens to be on 40 meters, and if I hit the pause key, the uh, focus will change to the bottom and I'll be on 20 meters. The little red dot shows me where the transmitter is and that matches the radio, which I'll show you in a minute. All this integration is hooked up in software to the radio, so no extra hardware is required to make it work. And that works really well. Here we're looking at a full setup of SO2R. We have uh, 40 meters on top. Uh, we have 20 meters on the bottom. I've got a QSO going on on both of them, CW on 20, sideband on 40, which will allow us to hear uh, the differences in left and right channels. So I'm going to turn the audio on. There's the 40 meter one. Okay, Gordon. Okay, so it's clearly 40. And then I'm going to flip, and then of course the CW is faded on 20 below, but we'll find another signal. And we'll go over here. We've got some loud, C, louder CW. And if I hit the tilde key, we're going to hear both receivers at the same time. One in the left ear, one in the right ear. And your Jupiter sounds uh, very good with that horizontal in-fed wire. I think you said 85, 90 feet. So in the one year we had sideband and the other year we had CW. And that's how SO2R works. And I can work both of these people because I have resonant antennas available to me in the 6600. And this allows me to quickly flip back and forth. And in any other world, if you wanted to do this, you'd have to double up everything. You would need two radios, two amplifiers, uh, some glorified switching. Uh, you'd have to go out and buy the part that did the audio part where we switched the audio back and forth. So pretty powerful built in here. We'll run through it one more time. Uh, but if we wanted to focus on the center of I've now turned off the 40 meter part just with a keystroke. Oh, with the pause key, I can go back to 40. So, um, founders, I made uh, several founders and I.
that's SO2R and how it's built into all 6000 series radios. So Israel. let's simulate a bit what happens in the real world, or I'm actually going to show you exactly what happens in the real world. We've got the same setup as we've had for the last two examples. And we have, uh, we're going to be on 40 and we're going to be listening on 20 at the same time. Pretty much the second harmonic of 40. Uh, N1MM is going to call CQ with a voice keyer. And I want you to watch over here on the right, and you'll see the watt meters all move. And I'm running about 50 watts, and there'll be uh, mic level stuff going on, and, and that's fine. And you'll see over here the RF being generated. We'll zoom in on that a bit. But I really want you to watch down here on 20. Now, we've got some static crashes here, so don't confuse that with what I'm going to show you. But right now, if I uh, hit, uh, you know, just send my call sign, you'll see that it goes out but we really don't see any noise in the bottom of the radio. And this would be very typical for an SO2R setup, operating about 7140 and maybe dialing around about 14200 or so. Hey, look at that. We didn't see anything. Okay. Well, that's great. You know what? Let's turn the amp on. And uh, let's do it again instead of 50 watts. Let's run about 1500 peak. And this is with my stepper antenna on 20 directly above my 40 meter inverted V. Typical tower setup, not a lot of separation, and uh, so we'll hit it again and we'll see what it looks like. And here's my call, and we'll do it one more time. And you quite, you didn't really see it, and it's there. I mean, if we go up to 14280, you'll see the signal. Um, but let's um, let's turn the audio on. And we're going to mute this guy. And we'll unmute here. And, you know, you can hear it sort of, it's a little grumpy because uh, the band's a little noisy. But still, I'll call CQ on 40. Victor Alpha 3, Mike with. And I'll mute myself so you don't hear the monitor. And you will not hear any noise on 20. We'll do it again. So it's like we're not even there. Incredibly powerful. And uh, by the way, that was with the amp on. So what, what, what were we peaking? We were peaking 1,500 watts. We'll do it one more time. And, and you can listen, especially if you happen to be on headphones. It'll be easier to hear. And that's the isolation. That's a 6600 Power Genius XL and two separate antennas. And we don't even hear it. Uh, at the, uh, you know, in a typical operating area. So, what does it look like? So, well, we want to go up to 14280 or so. Um, 14280, well, there's this really loud guy there. If we hit tune, we see our signal right here, right where it's supposed to be. But it, uh, and I'll zoom out a bit. And you'll see it affects a bit of the band, but not as much as you'd think. And that's, um... 900 watts right below. Uh, you could certainly hear through that. And, and if I even called CQ again, you know, there it goes. You see the top and bottom. But wow, that's incredibly good isolation. And that's without any extra external uh, bandpass filters. That's just with the bandpass filters built, in, built into the amplifier and the bandpass filters built into the radio. So in closing, if you want to watch that again, you'll see in the bottom that there was some signal right at the point of the second harmonic, uh, 14280. And it looked really broad and it looked really loud, but it actually wasn't that big a signal. And you will always have some bleed through on the second harmonic, so that's not uncommon. I learned after running CQ Worldwide or CQWPX uh, last weekend doing it that I almost never heard myself while I was running on two different bands that were adjacent until I got right near the second harmonic. And then occasionally when I got very close, I'd start to hear a little clicking, but nothing that was incredibly distracting. Flex 6600 or 6700 with the amplifier is an incredibly seamless solution to put together with a couple of LAN cables, RF cables, and just a little thought on your antenna layout. I think you'll be pleased with the performance if you haven't tried it. Uh, if you have the equipment, certainly give it a try. And if you're a contester, it'll up your scores. And if you're not and you're a digital person, you can be on more bands at the same time without one band transmission impacting another. So I hope that helps you out a bit. 73, thanks for taking the time to listen.